You know, what are the necessary conditions to facilitate a positive change? In 1957, Carl Rogers said that six conditions are essential for facilitating the change. And in 1959, he stated them as the theory of therapy. In 2001, Wyatt amalgamated this and presented it as follows. The first is the two people, that is the therapist and the client, should be in psychological contact. Mind you, not physical contact. Psychologically, they should be in contact. Two, the first person, that is the client, is in a state of incongruence to start with and is vulnerable and weak and asks for guidance or help or treatment to the second person. And what should be the quality of the second person, that is the therapist? He or she should be congruent, that is well-integrated personality in relationships, both interpersonal and intrapersonal, okay? Then the fourth one is <clears throat> the therapist should feel an experience of unconditional positive regard for the client or the person who comes for help. That should be an unconditional regard, not for money or for anything else. Then the five, the therapist should have an experience of empathy, understanding of people and their internal frame of reference and endeavor to communicate this to the client. And sixth, the client should perceive this at least to a minimal degree. That is conditions four and five at least, if not in full. That un unconditional positive regard of the therapist to the client and the empathic, empathic understanding if unknown to client. This become not fully effective. So not useless, but the full effect may not be seen. So if it is understood at least partially, that means the communication skill, the communication has been successful to some extent. So a music therapist should have good communication skills, interpersonal and inter intrapersonal uh, relationships and that along with the scientific aspects of music therapy makes him a good therapist. So this thing is a practical thing which you can assess only in a hospital situation along with the patients, along with the clients only, not with the simple theoretical things. How much people have been in contact with you that means and how much in relationship with them you are. That is the interpersonal, interpersonal level of relationship, no? That can be assessed only in a, uh, for the therapist, music therapist, not for a person, people like us, but for a music therapist, it can be assessed only in a hospital situation. Now, initially conditions three, four, and five were considered as core conditions. But now the other three are also considered as core conditions or the six are con considered core conditions required for a therapist. Now, what are the reasons? A contact is a relationship. Two people coming in contact, it is a relationship. It is a profound, meaningful, person-centered relationship to be a psychological contact. That is faith or trust in oneself as well as in the other person. So naturally the trust of the three, four, five conditions come from it. Hence the first condition is part of core condition also. The person is, if a person is not incongruent, the person will not come for treatment to you or for the advice to you. So the incongruence and the possibility of a facilitating change is existent whenever any client approach a therapist. That is to reduce stress, reduce anxiety, reduce vulnerability, reduce the pain is ex existent when a person approach for a treatment itself. If they do not want a change, they will not come to the therapist at all. So it is inherent in that. 
the client should experience that the therapist have the qualities which he or she had heard about you know, and talked about. So communication of therapist's mind to the client is dependent on communication skill of the therapist as well as the receptivity of the person who approached the therapist both. For that contact communication, that is communication is the contact here, either spoken or written may be essential. In the case of music, musical contact also is necessary. So the conditions 1, 2, 3 to up to 6 are as important. Each one is, one is important. <clears throat> what do you mean by congruence of mind? Congruence, congruence is a mental state that one can achieve alone. There is no need for a second person. Within oneself you are getting a congruence. It exists within oneself. Have you achieved that? Have I achieved that is the first question. It exists within oneself and with one situations as in the case of hepatitis as I said. So the client is aware of what is happening within him or herself but not what is within the therapist. No. So how can a client know that I am approaching a person who is congruent with him or herself. It is impossible or near impossible, no? But he or she can perceive the empathy and unconditional positive regard for all life forms, all organisms in the therapist. So what Carl Rogers meant by congruence here is the relationship of two people nor the congruence of the self attained alone in meditation. See, I have that congruence in meditation. But have I got that congruence when I come to a patient, when I come to a client, when I come to a small pet, maybe a dog, a cat, or even a small uh, seed or a plant, if I have that to all these things, I will definitely have it towards the coming person also. An unconditional, compassionate heart is essential. And I tell you, if suppose a cancer patient is, the, when you speak to them, when, I, when you touch them, they should feel that I am a person who is one with him. That feeling we have to give, only then we can say that we have achieved that congruence of mind. The therapist and client are actually trying to get a healing experience for the client. If the therapist has an unconditional positive regard for all organisms and hence the client, the client will naturally experience the unconditional positive self-regard and thus the self-healing will start its cycle. That is what is very important. Thus the good therapist is like a good farmer giving a good environment for the paddy, for his paddy to grow, the paddy seed to grow up and show its best potential. This is the philosophy of the therapeutic human interaction in Raga Chigilsa or music therapy. Genuineness and empathic understanding are two Contextual attributes of unconditional positive regard. Trust is a tenderness and love. And that bridges two hearts. Quality of tenderness as demonstrating a preparedness and an ability to move between worlds of the physical, emotional, cognitive and mystical planes without any strain, just as a musician do in a good concert. He is doing that, no? It has to be understood. The same thing is applicable to a music therapist and a client. So without effort, you have to bridge all these plates of existence. The stream of love, effortless, with intuitive understanding of nature and its laws is communicated even without any biographical data by the therapist. You need not get all the biographical data of the therapist for that. Just one touch, one look, one word will be enough. The client instinctively will recognize in us 
the beloved companion for his fruitful journey. Thus the presence of the second person in the first person's life is a profound acceptance of presence in one's life journey. It is a spiritual relationship and spiritual understanding rather than a physical understanding or physical relationship. Music and musical life panorama and music therapy experiences give a profound spiritual experience that I can tell from my own experience. It is a profound spiritual experience and the method is, the method which we plan for them is well planned but the experience is not planned. We can plan the method but we can't plan the experience. That has to come from the other person. It comes when we least expect it, when we least predict it to happen. Both therapist and client get such experiences in the journey. It transcends all past experiences and a profound growth and self-healing happened. The effects of this healing is but measurable. How? With common parameters. That is the physical parameters of modern medicine. So the what is happening inside us, we just feel and both of us get a positive effect. But the parameters, the physical parameters also are possible. We have to measure and keep the data by the modern research methods of modern medicine. This is a must. So when, even it is a spiritual experience, its parameters are measurable with our modern techniques. Thus, the personalized approach of music therapy is transcending, transcending all planes of existence from physical, mental, intellectual and spiritual in creative as well as scientific ways. It does not have any side effects. Music therapy does not have any side effects. And suppose you give the proper conditions. You have to apply it judiciously and can be applied in either mass scale in hospitals, individual scale in hospitals or in family situations, educational institutions, professional institutions, as well as in day-to-day -day family care, care homes for children, for adults, Alzheimer's patients, so many people you can um, give this. So this is a thing which we are doing with our own uh, the involvement and with our full heart, unconditional love for the entire creation, with the scientific acumen, with proper data, so that the entire world get the benefits, even for the uh, uh, all the healthcare systems, especially the modern medicine and all, they they will be having actually if there is a music therapist in the hospital situation, the doctor also gets benefit, the medical doctor, because it is their client who, are, who is getting the positive effect. Now, that will come to later. Now, this is the way that we have to use a personalized approach, an individualized approach to music therapy. 